it happens more than, you know, we probably realize. And she said, you call 911, you grab some towels and um, pretty much find a comfortable position or somewhere comfortable to be. Um, and I remember kind of talking to Corey about that stuff and him laughing it off and saying like, this will never happen. Like <laughs> we, we don't need to know these things. Hi guys, I'm your host, Megan Van Diepender, and this is the Empowerhood Podcast. I am so happy to have you here. You know, motherhood is hard, and we are going to talk about all of the hard things that just are not talked about enough. So buckle up and enjoy this episode. Hi, Kayla. Hi, Meg. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So everyone out there listening today, we have Kayla Taylor here with us. Kayla is my sister-in-law, and we are going to talk today a little bit about childbirth, the unexpected things that happen, and how we can plan for them, and when you know our birth plan just completely goes out the window, what can we do about it? Um, and if anybody has any insight, it is Kayla. <laughs> she has had three kiddos that I don't think any of her birth plans have gone as planned, and it kind of got gradually worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, so before we jump into your personal uh, story, Kayla, tell us a little bit about you. Who is Kayla? I am, as you said, a mom to three um, wonderful little babes. I have a four-year-old, two-year-old, and a 11-month-old as of today, which is crazy. That is crazy. Um, we live in New York right now. I love being outside with my family, running, um, you know, just enjoying the nice weather when we can. Yeah, definitely. Um, I love doing those things with you as well. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot in common. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. So since we're talking about, you know, childbirth and, you know, everyone has a birth plan, right? When we're going into, especially having our first child, you know, we have this vision in our minds, like what we really want to happen. Um, you know, some people like soft music, you know, some people want an epidural, some people don't, you know, through your birth plans, um, sometimes it goes well and exactly how you wanted it. And a lot of the times it goes not how you wanted it. So why don't you just start from the beginning um, with your first child? How did that go for you? Yeah, when I think back to you know, everything you just mentioned, I think I thought through like, do I want music? Do I want, who do I want in the room? Who don't I want in the room? And at the end of the day, I think I told my husband, the only thing that I really wanted was an epidural. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to kind of put everything else aside and say, you know, it is what it is. I'll listen to my body. Um, and I will say the only thing I didn't get was an epidural. For <laughs> the only <laughs> one request, though, that you got. <laughs> yes. My only one request I didn't get. Um, but I think blessing in disguise, um, I learned, you know, what my pain tolerance was, yeah. maybe a little bit higher than what other people um, would give themselves credit for. I I think it's really important to just listen to your body. Mm -hmm. um, and I was doing that, but as a first time mom, I was also listening to the doctors. Mm -hmm. So I wish I would have listened to myself a little bit better that first time around. We went to the doctors in the middle of the night and they sent us home and said, you know, we'll see you in 24 to 48 hours with it being my first delivery. And in my head, I said, okay, I have to wait 24 to 48 hours. But as soon as we got home, my labor began and I did it pretty much all on my own. I told my husband, you know, why don't you get some rest? I'll go sleep in the other room. And my dog Luna laid with me <laughs> for the night and, you know, Noah was ready to come first thing in the morning and we just weren't expecting that. So what happened from there? You, you went to the hospital, right? But your water had already broken. Yeah. So I, um, decided to to pee right before we left my water broke and i still thought that we had time but i could quickly feel that my body was wanting to push mm -hmm. so i called down stairs to Corey and i said i think he was making eggs <laughs> um, <laughs> the last thing that i wanted at the time <laughs> um, i said i think we need to to get to the hospital so 
And we quickly got in the car and I held on to the, the handle at the top of the door for, you know, the 20 minute drive, which felt a lot, lot longer. Um, we got to the hospital. Thankfully, we had been there earlier in the night, so we could kind of skip through some of that triage questioning. Um, barely made it to the bed and I told the midwife, I feel like I need to push. So she quickly examined me and she said, well, that makes sense because I can see your baby's head. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got us back to the room. The, the doctor back there was really great. She said, I know you want an epidural. She's like, if you can be really still, I think that we could give you that. She's like, but I believe that he'll be out within two to three pushes. And I said, okay, let's do it. And I think it took maybe three pushes for him to come out. Wow. That's incredible. So within that time frame, did it like stick in your head that, you know, the doctor said 24 hours, was that why you kept, you know, waiting to go or? It did. And I, you know, I, I remember laying there kind of counting down the minutes in between contractions saying, okay, this is just what every woman goes through. This is the part that you labor at home. Little did I know that that was, that that was actual labor where I should have been in the hospital for. Right. But because they had said that to me, I just thought that's, this is what you're supposed to do. Right. And you didn't have anything to compare it to either. Right. Exactly. But, I mean, so we move on to your second child and um, <laughs> what happened with this one? I mean, again, kind of unplanned circumstances. Yeah. So, yeah, I think... So and to back up a second, I had all three of them one day before their due dates. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doctors will tell you, oh, the second time you'll go, you know, maybe a week earlier. Um, and you just, you hear so many different things from so mm -hmm. many different people. So, that, of course, all of that is in the back of your mind. So I was hoping that I would go a little bit earlier, but it was the day before, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was definitely calmer this second time around, mm -hmm. knowing that I needed to listen to my body, knowing how quickly my son came. I wanted to make sure that we were giving ourselves enough time. Um, we managed to get to the hospital on a nice, calm car ride. <laughs> I was tracking my contractions and they weren't super consistent, but keeping in mind that I had had my son pretty quickly, we decided to go to the hospital I got there and I was seven centimeters. Um, and she said, no, we'll get you up to the room. Your water hasn't, didn't break yet. So we'll get you comfortable. She's like, I think your water is about to burst. So why don't we break it for you? And that'll give us another, you know, 45 minutes to an hour, which I feel like doctors shouldn't give you those time <laughs> <laughs> it does something to your mind. Um, so we get up to the room, you know, she breaks my water. She says, okay, just let me know when things start to get um, really intense. I'll see you in probably about an hour. And I kid you not, she closed that door and it was maybe 15, 20 seconds. And my contractions started, they were just magnified the intensity of them. Um, my husband said, okay, I think we need to call. And like, I couldn't even grab the call button because they were so intense. Um, he called and honestly, I think I had her you know, within probably 10 minutes of my water wow. breaking. Well, were you able back. to get an epidural that time? I didn't. No, no okay. I chose, I, I chose not to. Um, and I remember checking in and my doctor asking me if I wanted it. And I said, no. And she, she said, have you ever not had one before. Have you ever done this? And, you know, I said, yes. And I was, I was nervous because I didn't know what this labor was going to look like, but I just decided, you know, I did it once before I can do it again. Yeah. Did you have like expectations of this birth compared to, you know, your first one with your son? Um, I would say yes and no. I, I think because of how quickly the first one happened, I went in with the mindset of little or no expectations okay. is the way to go. Right. Um, I mean, I wouldn't have said that I would pick to have my water broken, but I felt like, you know, I was listening to the doctor and listening to my body and mm -hmm. I felt ready, but because it hadn't, it didn't break yet. That was 
you know, delaying um, me having her. Um, I think having the doctor do it versus it happen naturally is a very different feeling. Okay. Um, but I don't think I have strong opinions about either one. Yeah. So say low expectations, if maybe not any. <laughs> making, yeah. it, making it to the hospital was probably my one um, right. <laughs> goal. <laughs> Now with your third child, was that your goal again? Like just to get to the hospital? Because at this point you've had two babies super, super fast. Um, And I know you kind of went through some different protocols just to prepare yourself just in case something happened and, you know, he came quicker. So if you want to go over those and tell everyone, you know, what you did to prepare. Yeah, I was was definitely nervous about not making it to the hospital. Um, Just knowing with my first son, how quickly he came after my water broke. And then also my daughter, luckily I was at the hospital already. And I remember talking it through with my doctor and she just reassured me that them breaking my water was a very different um, experience than it happening naturally. And that I would have time or I should have time if it did happen naturally. Um, So just having, you know, all of that in the back of my mind, I was definitely nervous about this time. And I also had two kids at home. Um, you know, at the time my parents were just happened to be on vacation that week. Um, so my mom couldn't be here. Luckily my mother-in-law was, and you were right around the corner. (laughs) Um, so we like, you know, had everybody kind of on call just in case we needed to dash to the hospital. Um, but even though we started to get all of those things lined up, I still had this nagging feeling that, you know, what would happen if we didn't make it to the hospital? Mm -hmm. And I was working with a prenatal and postpartum coach at the time. And she said, reassured me that after she had had um, a home birth for her last daughter, reassured me that people do it and people are okay. Babies are okay. Um, It happens more than, you know, we probably realize And she said, you call 911, you grab some towels and um, pretty much find a comfortable position or somewhere comfortable to be. Um, And I remember kind of talking to Corey about that stuff and him laughing it off and saying, like, this will never happen. Like, (laughs) we we don't need to know these things. Um, How many days in advance were you talking to the coach about it? This was probably weeks before. Okay. Okay. I remember probably like 32, 34 weeks. Maybe I started to really get just this gut feeling. Yeah. Yeah. That I needed to at least have, I wouldn't call it a plan. I just needed to know, you know, the one to two things that needed to get done if it were to happen. Okay. All right. Walk us through what happened. (laughs) (laughs) It is, as I mentioned before, the day before I'm due, I start to get early, early morning, I start to get contractions, Um, you know, very light, nothing um, consistent. It's probably 3.30 a.m. I get up, I take a shower because I can't sleep and I'm just starting to, you know, track my contractions and what's going on. Again, obviously keeping in mind that I deliver pretty quickly and we want to give ourselves enough time. So it's maybe about, you know, 4.30 ish. My husband's up. I remember him doing push-ups in our bedroom. I was like, I'm going to call the doctor and just see, you know, what they think. And he was like, okay. So I call, I have a contraction on the phone with the midwife and she helps me get through it. And she's like, why don't you just, you know, slowly make your way down to the the birthing center. We'll check you out. Um, still seems like I'm pretty inconsistent, but you know, just head down here and we'll let you know and we'll check you. So I think I tell my husband, I think, you know, within the hour we should, we should probably be at the hospital. He's finishing up his push ups. <laughs> goes to jump in the shower really quick. And I start just, you know, gathering some of my things and start to head downstairs. And as I'm walking down the stairs, I feel you know, a couple back-to-back contractions. And I was like, you know, that's a little bit strange, a little bit quicker and stronger than what I've been having upstairs. It's like maybe, you know, I was walking down the stairs or something. My husband's coming down the stairs not too far after me. I get downstairs into the kitchen and I have another strong 
contraction. He runs out to put our bags in the car and I go to just pee one more time um, before we leave. And I am sitting on the toilet and then all of a sudden my water breaks. And as soon as that happened, and I think I had said this to myself and but I hadn't said it out loud, I said, if my water breaks at home, we are not making it to the hospital this time. Like we will have the baby here. So immediately that thought comes back into my, to my mind. And I actually call Corey on my watch (laughs) and (laughs) water just broke. You need to come into the bathroom. My body felt like almost paralyzed on the toilet. I couldn't stand up. I remember my arms being kind of that bathroom is somewhat small. So I remember my arms being kind of on the walls, helping me through the contractions. And I, Corey comes in and I said, my water just broke and I can already feel his head. Mm-hmm. So he was already coming out. Um, and again, my body was just like automatically pushing and there was nothing I could do um, to stop that. So Corey looks at me and he says, what do we do? And in my head, I'm like, we talked through these things. <laughs> he wasn't listening. <laughs> you weren't listening. <laughs> I said, we need to call 911 and you need to grab some towels. And he called 911. You know, by God's miracle, we had a stack of clean pool towels right by the door. Um, you know, the 911, um, the person that picked up was a lifesaver literally he said you know he had to Corey had to get me off of the toilet so he pretty much you know picked me up um grabbed the towels that were right there and laid me down in our entryway and he just talked us through you know trying to stay calm um pushing uh, i think it took two pushes and callan was out Um, the cord was around his neck, uh, you know, thankfully Corey recognized that because it had happened with Charlotte. So, um, he wasn't crying at first, but Corey was able to get the cord off and turn him over. And he did start to make some noise, um, which was, you know, obviously nice to hear. (laughs) Um, I was definitely a little bit out of it, but remember, you know, those things happening. The state trooper was the first one here. um, And he kind of just radioed in trying to figure out how far the EMTs were, making sure that everybody was okay. But also, I could tell that, you know, first thing in the morning, he didn't really want to be delivering a baby. Um, But Corey did it. Right, it was already done. (laughs) Yeah, he didn't actually need his assistance. Um, You know, a few minutes at the 911 responder, I remember him asking if we had any string or anything to tie the umbilical cord with, and we didn't, but luckily the EMT showed up within minutes, so they were able to cut it. Um, and then they wrapped the baby, they made sure that I was okay, um, you know, eventually got me onto a stretcher. They did put uh, I believe they put oxygen around Callan just to, as a precaution. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we all jumped into the ambulance and headed to the hospital. How, um, how long was the 911 call? It was, you know, barely six minutes. And that <laughs> was the whole finish. entire birth, six yeah. minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know you mentioned, but like luckily – your mother, my mom was there um, yes. with the kids upstairs and everyone was still sleeping. And yes, so yeah, it ended up working Equally, out. But... Absolutely. It was, you know, right before everybody else was awake. Um, you know, I briefly remember my mother in law like tossing us some more towels, which was <laughs> obviously I was very thankful for and we needed them. Um, yes, but the kids were. Um, still asleep upstairs. I think, you know, our dog Luna started barking once the EMTs started showing up. So the kids did wake up. Um, you know, they thought it was pretty exciting to see all the trucks and stuff in the driveway. So they did get to watch from the window, but luckily they, they weren't scarred by the delivery of their brother. I mean, I think you scared the crap out of your whole entire neighborhood. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember my mom like text messaging me casually and was just like, Hey, was having the baby. Um, and I'm like, where? And she's like, Oh, in the, in the mud room. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I'm on my way. Yeah, um, it's not a casual so just like, 
definitely the most unexpected, even though you kind of had that gut feeling. Um, it's the most insane story ever. I feel like I get goosebumps like every time you tell it and I've heard it and I was actually like there at the end. <laughs> it still gives me goosebumps. I and I thank you for being here. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> up. <laughs> um, I mean, what advice can you give to especially like first time moms out there that have all these huge expectations of their birth and um, like, what could you, what could you tell them? I think it's, you know, at the, end of the day, I think it's super important to listen to your body. Even if it's your first time, it's your body and you know it best. I think, you know, doctors, you know, as I mentioned, everybody gives you kind of, we'll see you in an hour. We'll give you 24 hours, whatever it may be. I think listening to your body is the most important, um, Mm -hmm. not only while you're giving birth, but all through pregnancy. Um, Doctors see a lot, but once again, you know your body the best. Um, so whether that's setting expectations that I'm going to voice my opinions, I'm going to share how I'm feeling, you know, I feel like something's off, so I'm going to keep calling the doctor or, you know, I don't agree with something that they may have said, or maybe it's the complete opposite and you do agree and you want to share that, you know, you know, you responded the way that I, I'm glad that you did and because I was feeling a certain way. Um, so I think all of it goes back to just listening to yourself. Um, you know, we know, we know what's going on inside and sometimes it's hard to say, but it's really important too. Um, and even, you know, sometimes you do get that little inkling of a feeling that something's going to happen and maybe asking for some advice or somebody that's been through something similar just to hear. So then it kind of settles your mind a little bit too. Right. Right. And I know you talk about like mother's intuition and I mean, do you feel like that's like a real thing, especially after your first, like with your second and third, like you had those feelings and it was, it was true. I do. And sometimes you you have them and you're like, well, I don't know if that would ever happen or that could be true, but then something, it does happen and you're, you kind of take a step back and you're like, wow, maybe I did know that deep down. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes it's hard because, you know, would I wish to have my my son at home unplanned? No. But did I have that strange feeling? And did I, you know, take the one to two steps that I needed to for, you know, it to go as smoothly as it could? I did. Um, And it can happen, you know, as kids, as, you know, when they're babies and as they continue to grow up, I feel like we always have that little, whether it's a voice or a feeling Mm -hmm. or a nudge, I, I, tr- I truly believe that it's in us and I think it's really important to listen to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I hope we're not like scaring everyone with your birth story because yeah. um, obviously like everyone is so different and I think that's kind of what you yeah. said, like you hear all these opinions and things that have happened to people and I don't think there's one birth story that is the same and I don't think it ever will be. You know, no. even though we're all going through the same motions of, you know, delivering a child and ch- uh, like labor and whatnot, it's still completely different for every single woman. So I think it's important to remember like what you said, like listen to your body. Even if you hear people talking about craziness or like, Oh, it was the easiest thing in the world, or it was the worst thing in the world. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I think, you know, you can handle it deep down and you just got to kind of go with the flow because sometimes these expectations, um, aren't going to be reality and you definitely don't want to be disappointed. You're getting, you know, the biggest gift you could ever get. You are. Yeah. 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 So would you say like go in with low expectations or, you know, what would it be? I think yes and no. I, I, I am a planner. So I think if there's, you know, a song that's really special to you or something that you want to stick to, whether it's, you know, just you and your husband in the room, or maybe you want your mom or an aunt or sister there, I think figuring those things out that will help you feel a little bit more comfortable, um, that it's great, but maybe not holding on to them where if it doesn't happen, your whole birth story or experience is ruined. I think there's definitely things that you can add to make it better, Mm -hmm. but I wouldn't hold them so high where if they aren't there, it ruins the experience for you. Right. Because like you said, no matter how you have this child, it's, it's an experience you will never forget. So you don't want not being able to play a song to ruin that for you. Right. 
Right. I know even sometimes it's like you can't even choose the doctor, you know, that delivers your baby. So you really yes. can't even have that in mind. You're just going to, yes. I mean, usually by the time you're to that point, you're like, just help me, please. God, <laughs> like, get this <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you can't be too worried about, you know, I'm going to have this horrible doctor or midwife or whatnot. I mean, they're all going to help you and, you know, hopefully hopefully help you make it a little yes. bit easier. Yes. I know my number one thing was I want an epidural and I did have it. I think my pain threshold is totally different than yours. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm one centimeter. I need to go to the hospital. Yeah. Um, but it, mine was pretty quick, not like a six minutes. It was more like six hours, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I tried to keep my expectations low because at the same time, it's like, I mean, if you want music, if you want flowers or video, I mean, I see people come in with photographers, you know, and, and that's yeah. so cool to, to have that memory and stuff. But I think the most impor- important part is, you know, keeping yourself healthy, listening to your body, and then obviously delivering a healthy baby. So it is right. At sure. the end of the day, having a, you know, healthy baby is what matters. So, yeah. I mean, out of all the three births, did you feel like there was anything that you could control within like up to the delivery? Oh, um, I think I took, a little bit more control over maybe my health and my mindset this last time. And maybe that played into it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was really sick with my daughter, my second, and I just knew that I didn't want to feel like that this time around. And I do think that it helped with recovery afterwards. Yeah. So that's probably the one piece that was different this, this third time, which I did see an impact, especially afterwards. So you kind of control how you took care of yourself. Yeah. Of course, your mindset. Yeah. 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 Whether it was, you know, the food that I was eating and just being a a little bit more, you know, mindful of like, I want to nourish my body, not especially while I was still pregnant for the baby, but then also thinking about breastfeeding and Mm -hmm. having two other kids at home and trying to um, heal. And I think it just made that whole yeah. healing process a little bit easier for me. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I think, I mean, mindset definitely, I mean, just your perspective, right? I mean, like we were saying, if, you know, expectations are expectations, but like if you have a perspective as like any doctor is going to be a great doctor that's going to help me today or, you yes. know, um, I can handle any situation that comes my way because, I mean, I feel like as soon as you get pregnant, right, you kind of lose all control. Not of your body besides like nourishing it and stuff, but it's like, it's not your body anymore. It's not just you anymore. You're taking care of someone else. And, you know, childbirth, like you said, you, your body was pushing and you couldn't even stop it. So it's like, you literally don't have control. So I feel like being able to find, especially as a woman, I feel like we like to have control, you know, being able to find (laughs) some control within the chaos of, you know, pregnancy and childbirth, you know, so I feel like that's, that's really great advice to be able to you know, control how you nourish your body. Um, and it does make a difference after and, you know, working on your mindset to be open to, you know, what God has planned, um, for your child and for you during childbirth. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I a hundred percent agree with, with all of that. Yeah. That's great. Anything else you can tell the listeners out there, Kayla? To <laughs> Gosh, don't be scared of my story <laughs> or stories. Yeah. Um, as we mentioned, every, Every birth story is so different and yours is meant to be exactly as yours is, you know, designed to be. I think you're made to be able to do it. Just remember that. Yeah. I think that is true. Epidural or no epidural, you know, we are built and made. That was my one thing I wanted. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Women are badasses for sure. I mean, it really took me to have a child to be like, holy crap, like I just did that. That's insane. Sometimes you Um, look around at other moms and be like, we have this experience that we've all gone through and we really are badasses. Like it's just unbelievable to witness. Yeah, it really is. It, it definitely changes your perspective on life and how you think of yourself as well here. You're amazing. Yeah. (laughs) All right, Kayla. Well, thank you so much for joining us and tell us, telling us your story. I mean, it really is incredible and I know it will help a lot of people out there. Thank you. (laughs) Even if it makes them be like, wow, I hope my birth story does not end up like that. I'm going to go get towels and put everything by the door right now. Everyone out there is saying. Somebody will remember those two things. Call 911, get towels. And hey, it's not the worst thing to have around, right? Especially if it's your first baby. If it makes you feel 
you know, safer and less anxiety, you know, yeah. do it. Right. Yes, it's I not going to hurt you at all. You can it definitely won't hurt. Just no. put them away <laughs> later. Use them, then it's fine. You just put them away after. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks, Meg. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Empowerhood is brought to you by Flourish Everyday Coaching. Check them out in the link below. And again, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. If you could take 60 seconds of your time and leave us an Apple review, this helps share the news about this podcast and help women all over the world. If you want to see the video version of this podcast, you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe there. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at the next episode.